Hi everyone, this is Isaac from Compositional IT. In this video, we're going to be continuing our look at rapid data analysis with F Sharp, but transitioning from a data oriented web API to actually building a user interface. Hope you enjoy it. I'm going to start by moving the existing API routes that I created in the previous videos into a dedicated module to keep a clean separation from the UI routes I'll be creating shortly. For the UI routes, I'll start with a simple hard-coded piece of text. I'm going to compose these two routers together using Saturn's forward keyword. Routes starting with API will be forwarded to the API router, while all the other ones will go to the UI router. I'm going to test that the API routes are still working before using a browser preview extension to show that the UI route also works. I'm now going to start creating our first view, which is a list of countries. To do this, I'm going to use Giraffe's View Engine feature, which provides strongly typed access to HTML elements directly in F -sharp. It looks a little unusual at first glance, but it actually maps directly to HTML. Each element takes in two lists. The first is the list of attributes, whilst the second are the children of the element. Observe how, since this is just F -sharp, I can seamlessly mix and match calls to other F -sharp functions and create HTML elements at the same time. The last thing to do is surface the HTML data structure in our application and I can do that using the HTML view function. This sets the correct content type and so on. I'm also going to use this opportunity to create a reusable function that creates the surrounding HTML page rather than the content as well. This helps keep our view functions focused. Again, as this is just normal F -sharp, we can arbitrarily split out sections of views as we need. I'm now going to switch from using divs to a full HTML table that shows the country along with its most recent statistics. Firstly, I need to expose the data in a new shape. I can use F -sharp's anonymous record support to rapidly create the correct structure. Now that I have this data in the correct shape, I'm going to create the table structure, again using Giraffe's view engine types for all the separate HTML elements that I need, such as table, tr, td, and th. I'm also going to format the numbers so that they get thousands separators. Now we have a table. However, it doesn't look especially appealing, so I'm going to add a CSS style sheet to it. Don't worry, I'm not going to waste our time creating one myself. Instead, I'm going to import the Bulma CSS framework to do the hard work for us. As I'm adding this link in the create page function, all the pages will automatically get this link. Once I've added the link, I just need to add the table class to the table element and reload the page. One thing that I don't like here is that the reference to the CSS table class is stringly typed. So let's fix that with a type provider called type CSS classes. Now, I can directly access a strongly typed list of all the CSS classes generated directly from the Bulma style sheet itself. Now that I've got some more confidence in my use of the styles, I'm going to embed the contents into a section and a container in order to give the contents some padding. I want to enhance the page with a hero banner. This is using more Bulma styles, taken directly from the samples on the Bulma documentation site.
Note that I'm also parameterizing the create page function to now take in a title and subtitle. I don't need to worry about types for the arguments because F-sharp's type checker will correctly infer them for me. I'm going to add a colour to the hero now. Notice how Bulm allows us to compose different CSS classes together, in this case hero and is primary, with a space. This looks a little messy though in F-sharp, so I'd like to show you a couple of ways that we can make this look a little bit nicer. The first option is to create a custom operator that will insert the space. Here I've used plus plus. Be careful with custom operators. Use tastefully, they can dramatically reduce code clutter and improve readability. But it's easy to go overboard and create a huge DSL of operators that only you understand. The second option is to create a simple helper function, which I've called classes, that takes in a list of class names and concatenates them together with a space. This is probably a safer bet in this case in that it doesn't use custom operators and lists are pretty standard within f -sharp code, so I'm going to stick with this one. The last thing I'll do with this page is add a hyperlink to each country name which will take us to a details page. The link now works, but the router always returns the same page. So to fix that, I actually will create a full router, which will either show the index page or a specific page for a country. To test the routings working, I'm just going to have this page return the country name back as plain text. Now that that's working, I'll create a proper function which creates a simple page with an appropriate title and subtitle. I want the details page to show a chart of the deaths over time for a country, like I did in the very first video, except now we'll do it within a website rather than through a script. So I need to add xplot into this project as a dependency. As we've already added it to packet, this will be quick to do. Now I'm going to call the existing country lookup API method to retrieve the statistics over time. If the country exists, I'm going to pull out the date and the deaths and show that as a chart. Helpfully, xplot can return the raw HTML, which I can then embed directly as text within the page through giraffe. Let's take a look at the results in a real browser. Looks like it's working. As we finish this video, I'd like to emphasize a few points for you to think about. First, the entire application has been written in f -sharp. There's no raw HTML with embedded code. Instead, the HTML is emitted from a simple f -sharp dialect that gives us a degree of type safety, yet it's close enough to HTML that we can easily map samples across one-to-one. -one. Second, you saw how we brought together several unrelated libraries seamlessly. A web server, a view engine, a CSS framework, type providers, charting libraries, and a dataset. f -sharp acts as the glue for all of them. Third, there really wasn't much code required. The data access layer is around 50 lines of code, and the entire web application, including API and view endpoints, are another 100 lines. There are no cryptic operators or difficult mathematical concepts to get your head around yet the entire application works with immutable data and is entirely expression oriented. We started with a script in the first video before transitioning to a simple data oriented web API and now have an HTML user interface using a popular CSS framework. I think that's pretty nice. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any questions in the comment section and we'll be sure to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe and have fun with F-Sharp.